Right, full strength tie off. Just a couple of things to tidy up um, in terms of sort of the detail of how you do this. So we're using the Rock Exotica Kootenay here, but there are other Kootenays available on the market. You can use this as a full strength tie off. Some of the practice that you'll see out there, okay, um, probably isn't ideal. So first of all, all we're doing is using it as a bollard or a capstan. So you're just gonna go around as many times as, uh, as you need to. All right, so a couple of practices that you'll see which aren't great. First of all, what you don't want to do is tie off with half hitches here and in particular pull the half hitch to get a change of direction there. So you will see people doing that, okay. Um, the problem with that is you introduce a change of direction here which is the point of weakness and kind of defeats the whole point of having the full strength tie off. While we're here, let's just talk about this. Okay, whatever your MBS is for your particular Kootenay, you've got to make sure the connector is going to be strong enough and you've got to make sure the anchor connection is strong enough. So we're using a blitz anchor here, 25 kilonewton tape, and we've got one, two, three, four strands in there. So that's, that's strong enough, that's strong enough. This is strong enough. This isn't the ideal practice. Um, whenever you use a Kootenay, um, even if you've taken the pin out and locked the sheath, which you do here by taking the, the boss out of the middle of the axle, um, you're still going to get a lot of slippage. So when you put a load on this, it will tighten up. So the next thing you'll see people doing, which isn't ideal either, is to put a termination on the end, such as a figure of eight on a bite. This is trying to get that done. <laughs> Clipping this back. Uh, two things are going to happen if you do that. First of all, this will inevitably tighten up on you, and then you can see it all jams down into there, and that just means that uh, first of all, it's not working as designed, and secondly, you can't disconnect it. So I would avoid that solution. Effectively, if you look in the manufacturer's guidelines for how to use these things as a full strength tie off. what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring the line out through the window on the back or up near the becket. So they've all got these, Petzl's version's got something similar that enables you to bring it out through here. So a couple of things to bear in mind, if you bring it out through here, really you want to minimize the opportunity for this to rub against the edge of this frame. And you definitely want to check that you haven't got any sharp edges there. So um, the next thing that you'll see people doing, which again, kind of gets you into a little bit of a pickle, is they bring it out the back and then once again they terminate with a figure of eight and clip that back to the anchorage the problem with that is this will run through here most of the load will transfer onto the sheath and then be held by the Kootenay, but you will have residual tension in this. You'll never ever get enough wraps on to stop a rope sliding against that boss. So all of this will end up back down in here and tightened off, uh, which isn't ideal. And secondly, you kind of go, it's difficult for you then to maintain it and undo it under tension. So any kind of termination back here, that's gonna see the device effectively tighten, the rope tighten up and then not be able to release it. Um, is less than ideal. So I'm just going to take a turn off here to make it a bit easier to pull it through. Right? But what you have is you have options back here. So you could, for example, bring more rope through and then just terminate it direct onto wherever the substantial anchorage is here, in this case, the portal frame of the building. Okay. Or you can run it through a connector here. And the nice thing about using a blitz anchor here is you've got plenty of space to get another connector in and then you can run it off to somewhere else and terminate it off somewhere else or tie it off on here and the preferred method wants to be something that you're going to be able to release under load and a properly set Italian hitch is pretty good for that and then just tie it off right so you can put a slippage in there if you want to 
right? So all this is gonna do is end up as just taking the last of the tension off this. This will now tighten up against the device. Most of the load will run through the um, sheath and transfer through the Kootenay onto your anchorage. And this just stops the end of the rope tracking back in. All right, so being able to have it releasable and be able to tie it off in such a way that uh, you're minimizing the opportunity for this to rub against the frame is good to do. Now the last consideration in here, whichever method you want to go for, because there are lots of ways of doing this, is just to think about this, which is another kind of justification for why to bring it out the back of the machine, out the back of the Kootenai and tie it off. Effectively, whatever version of this I'm doing, whether I'm tying it off or I'm putting a, a, a bit of weight on a bike or whatever, we're relying on this rope now and the strength of this axle in here. So if you use this as a carriage on a high line, a uh, bit of a debating point, but most teams would, uh, would back that up. They'd say a single pin axle on that Kootenay is a, a single point of failure and they would put a jumper around that or something like that. So if you tie it off in front and don't bring it out the back, back to the anchorage, effectively we're relying on that. So once again, you've got a single point of failure on that particular line which depending upon your local protocols and your training, you may or may not be uh, happy to accept, but you should certainly be aware of it. Okay, so uh, many options and variations on this. Just a quick run through of some of the pros and cons of the different ways of tying it off. Generally speaking, for full strength tie off, what you're trying to do is reduce the radius of the turn in the rope, which reduces internal movement of the strands inside the rope as the tension's up which produces heat and friction and effectively weakens the rope. And that's why knots always fail, or the ropes nearly always fail in the knot because of the, the change of direction. So you want a radius turn or a diameter turn that's 10 times the diameter uh, uh, of the rope. So if we've got a 11 mil rope, we're looking for something like 110 mil. Okay, so once you get to that kind of radius, okay, people generally accept that as being a full strength tie off. So you don't need to go through a Kootenay, okay? You absolutely don't bring it through a Kootenay and then put it on a force limiting device like a 12841C descender controller. You'll see people do that onto an ID or something like that. You kind of go, that's doing the job anyway. So you don't need the Kootenay in there, okay? If you're gonna use one of those as a termination. So these are commonly looked at as ways of terminating track lines on a high line system. Okay, or potentially the end of a, of a span anchor system, all right, so that you're not reducing the strength um, because of the force multipliers you get in wide angled um, anchor legs, which is effectively what it is, a track line or a, or a, or a span anchor.